Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer on Webinar, 12 Critical Fixed Ops Marketing Strategies You Should Be Doing but you probably aren't. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. For anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program that's right does your website company guarantee you a 50 percent lift in leads or your money back maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new dealer on website at dealeron.com hey i also want to let you know that sean rains and greg gifford will both be presenting at the upcoming digital dealer convention in vegas baby dealeron will be exhibiting there too so if you're going to be there stop by booth 601 and say hi i'll be there too we have the best booth around you're not going to want to miss it remember it's booth 601 we can't wait to see you there and we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Glenn Pash as our presenter today. Glenn Pash is the CEO and partner of PCG Digital Marketing and PCG Consulting. He's also a speaker, a writer, a coach, and operations strategist, as well as a customer service fanatic. A trainer at heart, Glenn works with executive management and internal teams to develop new strategies around digital marketing initiatives that will enable businesses to achieve their desired objectives and priorities. Glenn has more than 25 years of experience with a proven track record of lead leading diverse teams of professionals to new levels of achievement in a variety of highly competitive markets and fast-paced environments. Glenn speaks on a variety of topics topics that cover business leadership, change management, digital marketing, and the impact of this new technology on culture, business, and society. Glenn is the author of the newly released book, Power of Connected Marketing. He also writes for multiple industry publications, and his articles can easily be found online. Glenn can be reached at glenn at pcgmailer.com. And by the way, Glenn Pash will also be at Digital Dealer speaking about the power of connected marketing. And his brother Brian will be there also speaking on an automotive panel about how to measure if your digital advertising is working to sell more cars. You'll definitely want to check them both out at Digital Dealer. And don't forget, you'll also want to visit the PCG booth. That is booth 235, booth 235. Don't worry, we're going to see all of you there. Don't forget, PCG is at 235. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. And don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and guess what? Our good friends at PCG Consulting, they're giving away a tremendous prize today on the webinar. Actually, more than one. First of all, three of you lucky webinar attendees are going to win a copy of Glenn's new book, The Power of Connected Marketing. And then after that, one of you lucky attendees are going to win free access for 90 days to PCG's valuable online courses, Marketing Fixed Ops Using Social Media and Marketing Fixed Ops Using Google. But you have to be on the live broadcast to win any of those prizes, though, so stay tuned. Who knows? You could be one of those lucky people winning a cool prize today. And at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to get a short survey. So fill it out, because we're always looking for quality feedback from, your, from our audience. We want to know what you think. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation. So tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. And you can also hit up Glenn Pash at, you guessed it, it's, we like to keep it easy around here, <laughs> Glenn Pash. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So here we go. Let's get started. Let's learn the 12 critical fixed ops marketing strategies you should be doing, but you probably aren't. Glenn, how are you, sir? I am fantastic. How are you today? I'm fantastic too, but you know what? I know you just came back from an amazing trip in Italy, so you're probably doing a little bit more fantastic than I am at this moment, but I'm so glad you're here. And as I told the audience before we went live, I saw this presentation very recently. Glenn gave it in person at a small uh, digital dealer kind of conference, 
over here in New Jersey, and I was like, that's it. I got to have this on my show. So I am telling you, you guys are in for such a treat. You're going to want to take like pages and pages of notes on this. Glenn, I know you have so much to get to, and I'd love to chit-chat with you, but I think we should get started because you've got to drop a whole ton of knowledge in this hour of awesomeness ahead of us. So where do we begin? Okay, well, let's start. As you said, yes, I did this presentation in, in New Jersey at Digital Dealer, but I had also been asked to speak in uh, Portugal on this as well because I think dealers are really understanding that uh, it's very competitive on the front end when you're dealing uh, you know new and used pre-owned you know certified all you know when you're dealing with basically the front end of cars um, very competitive where dealers are realizing they have a huge huge upside is after sales and fixed operations and service that's really where they can gain not just advantage in terms of, you know, well, I'm going to take some market share. It's very, very uh, important to their bottom line because it generates revenue. So what we're going to talk about today, just a couple objectives. Again, I want to keep this very focused, give you tangible things that you can do. Uh, take it right away. As soon as you're done, you'll be able to just sit down in the next hour and do a couple of checkoff boxes and figure out if you're uh, – uh, complying with some of the things I'm pointing out. We're going to talk about the importance of fixed ops. We'll jump back into that. We're going to talk about advertising, what you're doing on Google and on Facebook. Facebook uh, is a big, big, important part. If you're not doing anything on Facebook in terms of Facebook advertising, we'll talk about why you should uh, either do it yourself or talk to your agency. Get into that game. It's very important. We're going to talk about your website because that is your home online. How is it set up? Landing pages. Uh, where are you sending your traffic, and also the use of videos. Then in terms of reviews, I think a lot of dealers spend a lot of time talking about reviews or their focus on reviews is the sales part, talking about people buying cars, when in reality, you have so many people in your service drive, if you're going to compete in fixed operations, you better have reviews. We'll talk about tools to use, You know some of the tools that you're using in the service drive, in terms of how equity mining and what is the responsibility of service to help equity mining, you know, three years down the line when you're trying to pull people out of their cars, put them into a new car. Why is service important in that retention number? And then Aliana we, and I will talk about giveaway in terms of prizes and answer any of your questions. As always, I'm here to help you. So if for some reason after this webinar is over, if you have a thought and you go, oh my God, I wish I'd asked Glenn this, or if you want me to look at something or you want to just run something by me that you're currently doing, all you have to do is reach out uh, to my email. And again, I'll put, show that up later on, but it's just glenn at pcgmailer.com. I'm here to help you, be of service to you, so let me help you. So let's dive in, just as an overview. Why are there pros and cons when we're talking about fixed operation? Why is it important? Well, according to... Um, uh, all the numbers that are out there, there's automotive, uh, I think it was automotive link, and there's a few other ones who do these general surveys at the end of the year of how much revenue is generated by after sales market. And as a whole, after sales is a 300 plus billion dollar industry in the U.S. Now that takes into consideration the independence, you know, the national change, the do-it-yourself people, go buy parts, I'm going to fix my car, serve it myself. But the thing that struck me when I looked at this number is that really only a third of that is really handled by dealership. So it's a huge opportunity if you think about it. Why are we allowing people to go down to the independents? If we spend all of our time selling them a car, why are we not retaining them in service? Why are we allowing them to go down the street? Uh, and you know, again, there, there's a whole other webinar we can do about the disconnect or silo mentality. That's why I wrote the book Power Connected Marketing. You know, how is your dealership, take it a step further, how is your dealership connected in terms of departments? Do sales and service really work together as a unit to retain that customer for the dealership? Um, it's a high percentage of revenue. When I queried my clients and some other friends in the industry, I talked to dealers, I say, to your bottom line, how much money, when I look at your total revenue generated, how much is generated by your back of the house, so to say, your fixed ops after sales, they were talking 50 to 60% of the revenue is generated by service. But the thing was, when I asked them how much of their marketing budget was spent, probably only 5 to 
the most I got was 20%. So you can look at it and say, if I invested more, a little bit more into my marketing, could I get more of this very high revenue money? But more importantly, it's high profit. It's two to five times more profitable in the back of the house than it is the front. But what do we spend most of our money in marketing on is our cars. Buy our cars, buy our cars, and just look at your website. How many pages, and we'll talk about this when we hit the website, but just think about how much real estate if your website was a city, okay, how much real estate in that city is dedicated to fixed ops? I'm going to tell you it's probably, if it's 10% of the pages on your website is fixed ops, it's probably less. Just think about that. We'll talk about it in a minute. And again, just the number of people in service that you have there, wow, they're coming in paying you money. Are you op are you really taking advantage of those people in terms of asking for recommendations for reviews of your service but leveraging them to say hey do you have any friends who want to buy a car from us or bring their car in for service are they servicing it somewhere else so those are a lot of the pros some of the cons it is very competitive out there you know the Jiffy Lubes the Sears the Meinekees you know that's all they do is service so the, all of their money is dedicated to that marketing, and we're going to learn from them. But if you think about it, if I ask all of the people who are on this call, when I talk to dealers and I do, did this webinar and did this live, uh, this presentation live, I asked everyone, what do you do? Every single person there said, we sell cars. So again, it's a little shift of mentality where we say, we want to retain our customers. And how do we retain our customers? Well, after we sell them, it's got to be retained through service, through the service drive. That's how we want to keep them. The other thing that's going to happen, and I, you know, why fix ops is important, and this is something no one's really talking about. You know, everyone's happy over the last couple of years in 2016, 2017. Again, pro, you know, project out to be fantastic sales numbers. We're hitting all-time highs again. But what no one's talking about is what we're selling, meaning. When I bought my the latest car I leased, and it's you know coming up on you know three years, three and a half years, so my lease is almost up. When just three years ago, they were just eking out going to a 40-month lease. 36, 40 months. So you're pushing 40. That was what they were doing. Now what are they selling? 60, 72, 84, 96, 96 month leases financing are being done. That's eight years. Eight years seven years lease. Most of the warranties are going to die out after three or four years. What's going to happen in those other years? That's why fixed stops is going to be important because these last few years you've been selling these longer term leases. No one's going to come out of their cars for an extra year or two. You better be able to focus in keeping them in, you know, keeping them in your pool of people through service. Okay? And like what I was saying in terms of retention rate, this is another big key. I've been writing about it, talking about it. Just think, if I sold 100 cars today, six months from now, how many of them am I keeping in service? Okay, let's say 20 of them bought from me, but they live somewhere else. It's a little far for them to do service. They want to service it locally at the other brand dealer. Okay, I get that. But if I start out that 80 of them come for my six-month service, how many come for my 12-month? How come for the 18 or the 20? Do we even pay attention to that? Do we push? our service drive to retain service customers. Do we even talk about that number? Because if I can, the longer I can retain that number, that 80 stays at 12 months, only drops down to 75, 70 or 65, instead of dropping down to 40, dropping down to 30, dropping down to 20. If I can retain those people, keep them in my service drive longer, I have a better pool of people. They're already my customers. My equity mining skills are gonna be better better results if I do that. So though that's just an overview of, in my mind, why fixed operations is so, so important. And everyone on this call and dealers are starting to wake up. They're calling us to ask us for advice. I'm being brought in to advise people on this because they're finally waking up to the fact that this is where I can drive a lot of money to my bottom line. How do I optimize my service drive? So let's dive into the fun stuff and see what we're doing. So again, as I said, this is the customer life cycle. Okay, we start up at the top here, we start, they do all their research, they're going to reach out to us, and we have all of our processes, you know, phone calls, emails, got to get them in for an appointment. We do all of that stuff. We sell them the car, but this is where we're going to focus on. What happens afterwards? But on this graph, 
I did this purposely because this is the reality of what happens in the dealership. Notice what's missing. Okay? Notice what's missing. Over on the left here, what do we have? We have a phone call. We have emails. We're talking to people. We want to get them in. We're aggressively going out and trying to get people to come in for an appointment. We're not doing that over there. I was just at a dealership. That when, when your service comes up in six months, they make one phone call. If you don't answer them, they let it go. Like, how aggressive is that? Or you really think about it. What is your sales process if you're selling fixed ops? Is it the same thought out process like you do for if you got an internet lead in where day one, day two, day three, day five, day seven, day 20? What are you doing in terms of your service customers to market to them, but also help schedule their appointment? Is it just, hey, I made a phone call, that's it? So again, are we really trying to get people in? So we're going to talk about how do we get more of these people in. So before we get started, Eliana has a poll question that I want you guys to answer. That's right, we do. We only have two poll questions today, audience. The first one is on your screen now. We'd love it if you'd get involved. Here's the question. Do you feel that your organization is doing a good job at marketing the fixed ops department? Pretty simple question, right? Please select one of the following answers. Yeah, yeah we are. We are fixed ops ninjas. Or how about, we do okay, but I can admit we could always do better. How about, meh, we don't suck at it, but I admit we're not great either. You know what, we really need to step up our game, or ugh, pathetic, we have two pages on the website and that's it. And I gotta tell you, I think a lot of people are in that last one. <laughs> I think they think they're doing a pretty good job, but maybe, I think after you hear what Glenn has to say, maybe you'll realize you're not doing as much as you possibly could. Maybe not even half. But here we go. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. So do you feel that your organization is doing a good job at marketing the fixed ops department? Yeah, we're fixed ops ninjas. We do okay, but we could always do better. We don't suck at it, but we're not great either. You know what? We know we need to step up our game or no, we're pathetic. Two pages on the website. That's it. All right, Glenn. Some of the votes are yes. still coming in, so let's give it a couple more minutes. Oh, also, audience, I want you to not hold back with your questions. I cannot tell you how great it is to ask your question to Glenn Pash. He is such a wealth of knowledge in him. So if you have a question or an idea you want to run by him, just like he said earlier, don't hold back. We are ready for your questions, so please make sure you get those questions in. All right, Glenn, we're going to close this poll, share the results, and see who we got on our audience today. You ready? Right. I'm ready. All right. Only 3% go ahead, three of today's audience says that, hey, they're fixed ops ninjas. All right. The majority of today's audience, however, 41% say, we do okay, but we know we could always do better. Now, 22% say, meh. We don't suck at it, but we're not great either. 19% of today's audience said, we know we need to step up our game. And 16% of my audience today, although savvy enough to come here to my dealer on webinar, <laughs> are admitting that they are in a pathetic state of fixed ops right now. So, <laughs> Glenn, does that help you out? Yeah, it does, and that doesn't surprise me. There's a lot of people who are, are doing okay, and that's really, you know, again, almost half of the people here are saying, listen, we do all right, meaning that we do do some, but the key is, and this is what I want you to take away, is what, you, what you're doing currently, there's a lot of other things you could be doing. Sometimes what it's, again, it's what you know and what you don't know, because you could just say, well, we're doing a great job or we're doing okay because we're sending out mailers, you know, or we're sending out coupons or we have a couple, we have a page on a website. There's so many other opportunities. And for the people who are just saying, hey, I have no idea, a lot of it, again, it's out, sometimes it's out of your control because it comes from the top down. Remember who's allocating that marketing dollars. Dealer principals, general managers, when they're looking at the marketing, is saying, okay, well, all right, I'll give 5% to the fixed stops. I'll give 10% to the fixed stops. That's not enough. That's not enough money. You know, again, so there's only, there's limited things that you can do with a limited budget. But yet, they will sit there and spend money on mailers 
to drive people to an event, whether that's successful or not. Again, it's just a change in the mentality. Some dealers will say, well, listen, if I'm making half of my revenue with spending 10% of marketing, why should I do more? Well, again, that's a business decision. I, if I'm investing in all that technology in the back and I have empty service bays or I could keep them open, why wouldn't you want to with a little bit more to gain more? That's really what we're talking about and how, how to be how to take some market share away or just do a better job of retaining, again, retaining your customers through service. Again, if you're, it's also, it, I'm astounded when I've asked dealers about that retention number, how quickly your retention of, like I said, if I sold 100 cars and I got 80 of them to sign up, you won't, but that's six months, how quickly it drops down, but one year, how quickly it bottoms out to 20%, 15% of people are servicing their car with me, that to me is just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And we're coming out, we're doing, PCG is doing a fixed ops uh, a survey, just like we did the automotive shopper study that came out, 2016 automotive shoppers. We're doing the 2016 fixed operation survey where we're asking customers, not dealers, we're polling. We're almost to a thousand people who are answered the survey to ask them, do you service at a dealership or not? If you do, why? If you don't, why? Are there services that you would only go to a dealership for? Is there services you'd never go to a dealership for? Again, to give information back to the dealers to say, hey, is this what you thought? And these are your customers. Here's, here's how you better market to take market share. So again, once that comes out, we will alert everybody. We're hoping it'll be ready in the next month or so. And um, you know, we're excited. So let's dive back in now. Let's get into, okay, so what we're gonna do here is let's get into advertising. Okay, everybody when they start advertising, we, we think of Google, we think of AdWords. That's usually a knee-jerk reaction. That's the first place dealers are going to go, hey, let's talk to our AdWords campaign and we're going to do a uh, service campaign. You know, we got our new campaign, we got our used car campaign, we're going to do a service campaign and they'll do something. So I was up, I teach at Northwood University, I'm doing it again, I teach digital marketing up there um, using our textbook that my brother Brian wrote, uh, Mastering Automotive Digital Marketing, and one of the sections we talk about is service. So we had everybody just do random searches for a service that somebody, uh, a consumer would want. So oil change. So we typed in oil change in the area. We're up in around Midland, Michigan, and these three came up. I want you to just look at, okay? Looking. I want you to just look at what the text is in the ads. So at the top, we have oil change. So if I'm typing in oil change service, oil change special, something along that line, that's what a consumer is going to type. What comes up? Well, the one at the top, Sears, uses the word oil change. So does the bottom one. The middle one, for some reason, nothing in there about oil change. Interesting. So they bought the keyword oil change, but look at the ad that they put up. So again, disconnect. The top, what we're, what do we see in the top one? We talk about pricing, get an appointment online, competitive, it, hey, $14, $14.99 oil change, 20% off, pop, 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 pop. All the bottom one says is get your oil changed today. So again, first thing, one of the strategies, when you're looking at your ad, when you get your report from your digital marketing agency or whoever's doing your fixed operation ads, take a look at the text. Take a look at what's in the ad because right now if I'm looking at oil change, this middle one, they're off of my list because they don't even talk about oil change. Why would I click on that? Now the other thing, when I did click on that, it was sent to the home page. So again, waste, wasted spend. If anybody clicked on that for some reason, I just paid to someone who was looking for oil change and they clicked and they went through to the home page big disconnect. Again, second piece in this type of advertising when you're inspecting it, where is it going? Where is the destination going? Is it going to my, you know, wherever, is it going to my general service page? Is it going to the landing page? We'll talk about strategies when we get to the website, but just easy thought, where is it going? Okay, now the bottom one, this is where it went. How exciting is this? Ford Quick Lane near Mid Midland. Below is a list of express services, oil change. Now again, if I'm looking for something about oil change, if that is my 
one mission. I'm going to look for oil change. Okay? Does this excite me? Does this help me? Does it do anything? Is there any call to action on this page? Okay? Again, not exciting. So again, when you look and say, okay, well, they're sending it to a page on my website, well, please click through, go take a look, and are you, if you're the dealer, you're in charge of fixed ops, you're the marketing person, whatever your role is, there's a reason you're here on this webinar, you need to sit there and say, am I happy with the content? Does it answer their questions? Whatever they were searching for, are they going to find it here? Is it enticing somebody to pick up the phone and call me, or is it driving them away? Okay. Now, as I said earlier, you're competing against the independents. This is Sears. This was the top ad. When you click there, look at the nice page that it clicked through. Okay. Now, what I want to show you, I'm going to jump out of here a moment. We're going to go live to the web. Where's my web? Because I want you to see this is the website. Eliana, you can see this? Yes, and it's okay, really, it's really quite pretty. Okay, so again, this is their site. Remember, this is the only thing they do is service, right? They're doing batteries and tires. But as we scroll down, look at the imagery, look at everything, all right? Now, when they click through to the oil change page, learn more, look at what we have. Oil change service, information, content that is going to help somebody make a decision. What type of oil is best for you? little advertisement here about the different ink. Here's their specials. Here's the different ones that they have. As we scroll down, what oil is right for you? Maintenance packages. Even a video on oil. Articles, how to choose the right oil for you. The reason I'm saying this to you is, my question to all of you is, do you have that? If that's what you're going to compete with, when you go look at your website, and as we move into the website in a, in, in, a, in a couple minutes, just think about that. Do your pages look like this? Go look at Jiffy Lou. Go look at Meineke. That's who you're competing with. And if you're not putting in that effort onto your pages in terms of service, then you're going to lose out because your content, most dealership websites, the content is, here's a scheduler. Hey, call us. Hey, do you want to come get your oil change? Here's a coupon. But there's no helpful content. That's going to win. The more content you have that helps people understand. One of the best things of teaching students was they're not in this industry. So as I walked through this and showed them things, their questions were so great. So they would say to them things like, well, why are you asking me? what oil I need. Why are you asking me what service? Why aren't you telling me based on the car? Why aren't you giving me information that's going to help me with the decision versus what type of oil do you want? Well, how the heck do I know? But if I have something like Sears did where it shows you here's the type of car you have, here's the type of oils, here's the difference depending on how you drive, that helps them make the decision. That's sticky. That keeps retention. If your customers think that you're always there to help them understand that you care about them, you want to make their life easier in this decision, they will stay for, with you. They do not want to have to constantly go figure out where am I going to go get my oil change or where should I get my brakes done. The goal is when their brake light comes on or the engine light's on, the first place they call is you, schedule the appointment, get it in because you make it easy for them. You make that whole process of, I have a problem, you're fixing my problem, quick, easy, simple. Okay? Let's talk about Facebook. This is, right now, I want you to remember this, this right now is one of, if not the best way to spend your money in terms of fixed ops marketing. We have done fixed operations ads and we you know marketing for fixed ops on Facebook using the ads we've done it tried it with the retail side cars things doesn't really work it's really finding great traction in terms of advertising for fixed operations if you are not doing this please think about it if your agency is doing something in Facebook again the whole posting organic postings done style you know you still need to do it don't get me wrong we still want to see great posts, but if you think that's going, that, that's not going to get you the clicks. Facebook has such targeted ads now. 
I mean, the targeting capabilities. I can target ads specifically to age range, to, to females, to males, to, to, to gentlemen who like to fish. If I have trucks, I want to find people who like to fish, who like to camp, who like to do this, and craft an ad to them. I can do this for them. Maybe it's winter, winterizing. Maybe it's tires, tires. Maybe I'm writing, uh, it drops them to a page in terms of video to help them understand. It is so cheap right now. This is like the early days of AdWords. Now, a year ago, nobody was doing it. More and more people are doing it, not as many. So I'm going to tell you, over the next year, maybe 18 months, that's pushing it, it's going to be cost effective. So if you're looking for an edge right now to, to impact the next six months, to really get some traction into fixed ops, Facebook, like I said, if you don't know who to go to, just reach out to me. Uh, I know Dealer On does things like this. We do things like this. There's other vendors. I'll guarantee you your vendor. The key is, though, they have to know how to do it. It's not rocket science, meaning if you have a marketing department in your group, they could do this. There's videos online to show you. It's not that hard. It just follows through to how are they bidding, what, what is the ad, where are they driving it to. So here's two sample ads that we did for our, some of our clients. One on the left, the Safford, was just an awareness campaign. Because one of the things that they're open, their service drive is open till 3 a.m. They stay open. We have another client who said they saw this and they said, hey, we're open till 11 o'clock at night. I don't think people know that. I said, here's an ad. So what you can do is you can target 5 miles, 10 miles around your dealership. You don't even have to, if you service other vehicles, you just do all brands. If you want to just focus on the brands, you do. It's an awareness campaign. Notice it's not an offer. All it is is, hey, it shows up in their feed. It shows up on their mobile device. Why do you want that? As they're scrolling through, if somebody's thinking about service, oh, oh that's right, I've got to get my car serviced, boom, click the call button, off and running. We have, we have had our clients say that they have, over the course of two months, almost doubled their service revenue because the phones are ringing, more people are coming in, just through, they haven't done anything else except advertise on Facebook because, again, we can run campaigns to target uh, their, their brands. We can target drivers. We can target competitive models. You can also, if you haven't heard about custom lists, you can take people from your CRM load those up into Facebook. Facebook will try to match the phone number or the email because we always have that in our profiles. And so now you can target ads to your customers. So you can go hit the people ahead of time a month before they need servicing. Hey, don't forget about servicing. You can do a lot of targeted ads, equity mine. It, it, your brains can just go crazy. It's really great. This one on the right, they doubled probably the amount of pages that somebody looked on the website, time on site, plus setting appointments, just because when they clicked through, they started looking at other things. We drove them to a relevant landing page. They stayed on site, looked at other things. All we did was say, hey, 5% off of your service when you take a test drive. How many people are sitting in your dealership waiting for their car? If there is an incentive to say, hey, listen, we'll take 10% off your bill, 5% off your bill if you go take a test drive with a new car, what else are they doing? Is it going to sell cars today? Maybe not. Maybe. But think about it. If I got extra test drives, what's your conversion ratio of test, test drives? It just might be, yeah, you know what, my, my car is coming up in a few months. I haven't really thought about it yet, but I think about it now. Facebook right now is the most cost-effective way to start doing targeted marketing. So if you're not doing it, you should do that. So in summary of our advertising piece here, Check your ad copy today, today, if you're in charge of it. Go get a report from your, uh, your uh, vendor or whoever's doing it. And don't let them tell you that, oh, well, you know, it would be hundreds of ads if I sent it to you. Too bad. Send it to me. Let me go look at it. Don't let, again, don't let vendors play the, oh, it's overwhelming. You'll be overwhelmed. Get a report. Check your landing pages. Find out where it goes to. Where does this ad go to on my website? Make sure it doesn't, it goes to the place you want it to go to. And then look at the landing page, make sure the content's great. Again, learn from the independents. Look at their pages. Is there something you can do? Are you going to be able to mimic everything? No. But you might be able to 
mimic a few things. We'll talk about it on the website. The one thing that you have to do when we talk about landing pages is this is what independents do. If you didn't notice, they have a different page for every service. Does your website have a different page for every service or do you have all of your services on one page? You have a VDP for every single car. Do you have a page about oil change? Do you have a page about brakes? Page about alignment? Page about this? Page about that? Oh, well, you know, we don't really have that. Well, why wouldn't you? Silly. That's where you drive all your traffic. And again, Facebook ads work. Before we jump into websites, do we have any questions about the advertising piece? Make sense? Clear? Thoughts? Oh, I, I saved the questions till the end. I'm sorry, Glenn. <laughs> okay. You can. I just, I just want to make sure. Yeah, we're so getting have any, comments if in. You have any, yeah. No, if you have any questions, you can send them to just... Again, while we, I'll give your brains a moment to compress about the advertising. You can send them to Eliana and then we'll move on. Awesome. Let's dive into your websites. This is the place, again, this is what we always talk about. This is our brick and mortar. This is our dealership online. But again, just looking at the websites. Now, not a plug for dealer on, okay? Little plug for dealer on, but I, I'm saying this. No one else knows I'm saying this, but DealerOn is one of the few websites, platforms that I know of that create dedicated fixed operations sites. Okay? Yeah, we are. One that's just, <laughs> just totally a fixed operations site. It's a separate website. It's a microsite. But again, if you're really looking to optimize fixed operations, it's a decision where you could say, yes, I'll have it on my website, but I might want to create a whole separate website for uh, fixed operations so I can really talk about creating that service department as if it was a separate building concept, like has its own website. So again, talk to Eliana. She can show you great examples. Again, they're, they do a very, very good job, not just plugging because I'm on dealer on. I'd say I said this before anyway, so just threw it in there. But let's look at again. I'm not picking on any website platform because they all sort of have this same limitation. But here, when I clicked on the service part, is again at the top it says Mopar. Most consumers don't know what Mopar is. We have to get out of this attitude in the automotive industry. We have a tendency to constantly use you know, abbreviations and words that we all know what it is, but the consumer doesn't know. But when I clicked on the drop down, parts and service, here's your parts, here's your service. Again, very sort of, you know, generic, nothing exciting. And when I click through, this was at the top of the page for a dealership. Mopar provides quick for Chrysler Deep. Nothing about the dealership. Where's the why buy from me? Now, as you went down the page, I wonder if I went down, okay, down the page was just, again, service hours, things like that. And at the bottom, very generic, well, this deal, insert dealer group name really wants to service your thing, but that was a templated response that was on a bazillion other sites. It's just templated. So again, go back to your pages. If I landed on that one page, Remember, a lot of times we think in our websites that people are coming to service through the front door, through the home page. But if you're dropping them on the website because you did an ad and it dropped them just to your service page and they land on here, that's my introduction to you. Is it telling me why I should do business with you, why I should service my car with you? Does it tell me anything about your dealership other than, hey, Mopar, we take care of everybody? Very generic. So again, it's a big thing in terms of why buy from me in general. That's just your dealership needs to do it. But take that same time to do why service. Now, on websites, the one of, I can say, Ellie and I, Eliana and I were discussing the terminology here is, is the most important. I think it's one of the most important things you need to deal with in terms of marketing fixed operations. It's service. There are companies out there. We are partnering with a company because we really like it. We don't do this, but I also know dealers don't do this as well. They all say that they're going to do videos, but they don't. But videos, this company will come there, film all the videos for you, and then you know PCG posts them and builds pages for you. But the whole point is, do you have videos? Like I'm going to jump out again because I want to make sure you're getting value here. But here is. Let's hopefully you'll be able to hear this, but this was their why buy, what to expect for service. Let's see if we can 
see if we see if it works today. <laughs> Darn it, it worked the yeah. other day. <laughs> uh, refresh it. Here we go. Come on, where's my video today? Sad, sad. Thank you for your recent purchase. When you visit Coram Ford Lincoln or Coram Hyundai for service, one of our service professionals will immediately greet you as you pull into the service track, record your mileage, and inspect your vehicle. Your service advisor will then review service history and go over maintenance needs. Relax in our waiting area with free Wi-Fi and children's play area, or enjoy nearby parks, restaurants, and shopping. Every service includes a complimentary multipole inspection to identify any preventative care needed and complimentary car wash. As winners of the Ford, Lincoln, and Hyundai President's Award for Exceptional Customer Service, we will work hard to provide you with an experience second to none. We are pleased to be part of the South Puget Sound community for 59 years and would love for you to join our family of satisfied customers. If it's time for service, stop by or visit www.coram.com to schedule your service appointment today. Now, the, the thing about, again, look at the professional quality of video. Again, sometimes we like to say, well, I'll do this with my iPhone, things like that. Uh, there are certain videos I would invest in because, again, the, the difference also between this company that we're partnering, again, I'm not bragging about them, but what I like about the fact is that once they shoot the video, they're yours. They're not, these are not hosted somewhere where if you stop their service, they take them away. So, you know, a one-time investment to get a great why service, a why buy. Here's another one that they do, and again, I hope we play well, but this was one on alignment, and they do it like oil change, the 3,000-mile checkup, 5,000-mile checkup, brakes, lights, flush. So. Valley Lexus Galleria is your Lexus alignment expert. Our experience ensures your Lexus drives in a straight line, your tires last, and your Lexus rides as the factory intended. You should have your alignment checked every 12 months or 12,000 miles. During every service, at no additional charge, now Lexus Galleria checks your tire wear for potential alignment issues. If anything looks suspicious, our computerized Hunter alignment system can quickly generate a report. Our technicians then make the necessary adjustments so your alignment is properly tuned. Now Lexus Galleria technicians tune and update hundreds of alignment systems every month. The smallest adjustment can completely change the handling characteristics. Okay, so now my point is, is that the thing about video, again, is making sure that the videos like these are taken on your dealership lot. So again, you're not getting some canned thing that looks like a generic dealership. Again, you want them to do it. But notice, again, thinking about this, how many services could you possibly have in terms of videos? How to schedule service. Just think, again, helpful ones like how to schedule your service online. Very simple. Sometimes people get to your website, they may not know, but if I show them or give them a video, you know, you can have the, the page on the website with the scheduler. If somebody knows how to do it, they don't need to look at the video, but why not have a video for those people? Hey, if you need some help, just click on the video, here's how to do it. What is a quick lane? What fuel injection, full service, express service, all of these things, every single one of these things should have a page on your website talking about who you are, because then you can do targeted advertising and drop them to a page. And again, remember, people want videos. Also on their mobile phone, videos play instead of trying to read long text. So video is one of the most important things. If you're going to leverage it and you want to differentiate yourself in the marketplace from all of your competitors, nobody's really hitting this out of the park. Like I said, this company came to us and said, look, we're doing this. We like the quality of this. Other people are trying it and it's sporadic, meaning like you'll find one or two and they'll do a couple videos. I'm saying take it for the max and say, why wouldn't you want to try to do this for all of them? I mean, some of them from the manufacturer. If you don't want to invest in this, go to the manufacturer and see what videos they have in their library that you could use in terms of, again, it may not be personalized to your dealership, but most manufacturers will have, you know, these generic standardized ones about oil change and tires and it's for your brand. This one from Mercedes-Benz, the Premier Express service. Get this on your website if you deliver this type of service. Just think about, it. like I said, if you don't want to invest in uh, someone coming in, maybe your current all, uh, uh, offline or traditional advertiser may do some types of videos. But again, 
if you're going to do it, do it right. If you don't want it, see if you can get something from the manufacturer. Um, in terms of landing pages, again, what I was talking about earlier, where are we dropping people here? Notice now these couple pages here, they're targeted for the service, routine car maintenance in Farmington. It's an overview page of services. Notice they have icons on the left. Iconization is really big. Notice the independents do a lot of this instead of words. We have words and icons, buttons, whatever you like to do, play around with it to, again, make the path easy. So if I'm just doing general service ads, come here, get your car serviced at Glen Pash Ford, I might drop them on this page here. Maybe with a, I have a why buy video. Why, I mean, why service video here? Here's my overview, understand. And then I might say, hey, below you'll see some buttons here, pick out the service you want. Boom, then it drops them over to the page with, you know, maybe it's a service, schedule service. And again, make sure your schedule, your service schedule, I know the, there's tools out there. Some of them are very clunky. We get used to them. We are used to our website. We play around on our website all along, so we know how it's a little wonky or glitchy here, but that's all right. We know how to do it. We'll just hit the button four times and it'll work. Have your friend, somebody outside of automotive, go ask a friend that you trust. Go ask them to schedule service. Go ask them to go on their website and say, would you service your car here? Do you understand what our message is? Do you understand why you should service with us? Go ask somebody that you trust and see what their feedback is. You might find that your website scheduler is clunky. It doesn't work or it's asking questions and people are like, I have no idea what to answer. I just filled in, I just put XXXXX because I just wanted to get to the next page. And then what happens, the advisors are like, oh, look at these people putting XXX in. I hate them. In reality, the tool itself is a little wonky. The other thing I want you to notice on the page on the right, at the bottom, again, content, how often I need to do an oil change. So again, words. But the big thing here is they have reviews. Do you on your pages for your service department, do you have service reviews? Now, you don't have to necessarily, I know, um, uh, well, let's see, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but a few of the different website uh, review platforms, DealerRater, thank you, my brain goes, DealerRater separates your reviews from service and sales, and sometimes you can get a feed. I don't necessarily think you need a feed on every page. It becomes too much, but you can take a couple reviews and plop them on here to, again, reinforce you're telling people at the top, we're going to take care of you. We want customers saying they took care of me, especially in service especially for certain age groups, gender, okay? Play around with it. Get the right reviews. It's very, very important for you to have reviews on your site about service to reinforce, to break down these misconceptions of if I bring my car to a dealership, it's going to cost me more. It's going to take too long, okay? All of those things that people may think about a dealership and bringing my car into service there. You need your previous customers raving about you saying, hey, the price they quoted me was the price I got. Hey, it was in and out, it was simple. Hey, they got me a loaner car. Hey, they called me when my car was taking a little longer so I didn't have to waste my time. God, I love bringing my car here. Whatever it is, we need them on all of our pages. And as I said, make sure your scheduler, a lot of these are I-framed in. So again, for those who don't understand iframe. This tool sits on another website. It just plugs in to your current site. Your website analytics doesn't really know what's going on with this. It sees it as a black hole. So again, you're depending on another tool for scheduling. Okay, Make sure that it works together with your website platform. Make sure it's easy to use. Okay, Quiz your people. Ask the people who come in and schedule service online, how was it to use while they're there? Hey, can I ask you a quick question? How easy was our tool to schedule service? Oh, it's great. Uh, you know, it was a little glitchy. I had to do it four times, but I figured it out. Get feedback. So again, then you can go back to the provider and say, hey, I need you to fix this. So website summary. Main service page customized to you, meaning wherever you're dropping them in to say, here's our overview of how we service. Okay, we need our why service video, why should I service from you, and text, why I'm going to take care of you, customer reviews, telling people, hey, this is a great thing, 
okay? We want that every page on your website, individual pages for individual services, treat each service as you would a vehicle, customize videos, testimonials, okay? Helpful information, here's, here's just some content about it. People sometimes are always trying to figure out from a dealership, well, what am I going to blog about? Why should, I don't know what to write about. Again, why should I, what oil is best for you? When do you need to change your oil? Why do you have to change your oil? Is there different oils for different types of wave driving? Is there different types of oils for different seasons? There's five helpful blogs in two seconds that I just thought up off the top of my head. Then you can go through, go into your service advisor and ask for them for the top 25 questions they get. There's 25 blogs. If you're putting one up every single week, there's half a year of blogging done, simple then you can play around, make videos of them too. So again, and as I said, make sure your tools are working. Okay? So I'll give you a moment to think about websites as we move into reviews and then our on-site tools. So Eliana has another poll question while you're letting your brains absorb something. <laughs> That's right. All right, last poll question is on the screen now. We're going to see how good you are at this, everyone. The question is, what do you think is the number one reason that customers go to national service chains instead of dealerships to service their cars? So when we say national service chains, yes, we are talking about Pep Boys and Jiffy Lube and those kinds of things, okay? So what do you think is the number one reason that customers go to national service chains instead of dealerships to service their cars? Pick one. Do you think that those customers believe it will take too long? They believe that dealerships' prices are higher. They believe that going to a dealership would be inconvenient or too much hassle. That they had a prior bad experience at the dealership. Or that they've read bad reviews about the dealership. Once we get a majority of those votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And let's see. Okay, votes are coming in fast. All right, audience, you guys are killing it. All right, one more time. What do you think is the number one reason that customers go to national service chains instead of dealerships to service their cars? They think it'll take too long. They think dealerships' prices are too high. They think it would be inconvenient or too much hassle. They had a prior bad experience at the dealership. Or they read bad reviews about the dealership. And yes, guess what? There is an answer to this question, which um, Glenn Pash is going to school us all on in just a little bit. All right, audience. Glenn, when you're ready, uh, a couple more votes are still coming in. When you're ready, I'll close this poll and share the results. Whenever you're ready. All right, let's see what my very smart audience says. Okay, 11% of today's audience think that consumers believe that going to a dealership will just take too long. 11%, all right? The majority, however, a huge majority actually, 60% of my audience today believes that consumers think that dealership prices are higher than those at the national service chains when it comes to service. 20% of today's audience believe it would be inconvenient or too much hassle. Only 6% of today's audience said that they think consumers might have had a bad prior experience at the dealership. And then the remaining 3% say that they think consumers might have read a bad review about the dealership and so they don't want to service their cars there. So, Glenn. I know you've been doing some research on this particular query. What right. is the answer? What, what, what can we tell the audience today about this? Well, yeah, the initial results that we've been getting, just looking at it, ties in a little bit to what people say, is that it depends on the service. It's interesting. We asked a question in our survey, um, are there specific services that you would that you feel you have to go to a dealership for? And it's interesting, it's some of the bigger ones, you know, my brakes, my alignment, I have to go there for it. Oil change is the lowest one. But yeah, oil change is the one that a lot of dealerships market, and that's where they believe prices are higher. And so it does. So we also asked the question and said, if prices were equal, meaning if you knew that the prices were the same at the dealership or the independent, where would you go? resounding, I think it was like 80% of them, 85% said they go to a dealership. So again, these are marketing oh. things that you can think about where you say, 
well, why am I chasing oil change? Why am I constantly putting out an oil change coupon if, number one, dealers hate oil change stuff. They feel that's clogging up my lanes here. I don't make any money on it versus marketing the important ones or, more importantly, really going out there and saying, hey, our prices are equal with others. Now, my brother Brian just came back yesterday. He spoke at the Cars.com uh, sales event, and Cars.com, again, is doing some interesting things, but they're making this partnership with this company called RepairPal. And what RepairPal is, is a third-party service that evaluates you, 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 you know, get their service or whatever, however it is, uh, you know, you enter in with some agreement with them. But they basically give you a certification, meaning that they audit your prices for your fixed stops, prices for your services against all of the competitors, including the independents. And if you're within a certain range, meaning you're you know, plus or minus X, whatever their threshold is. I just heard about this this morning, so I apologize. I didn't do more research on it. But they give you a certification. So then you can say, listen, look, a third-party person says our prices are competitive with everybody around here. Third-party evaluated, not us just saying it is. Third-party did that. So just think about that. If customers are saying, if I thought that prices were the same, I'd come to a dealership, you might want to start thinking about how do I advertise that? How do I do that? I mean, I always use the example of uh, a supermarket around me here is called Wegmans. In their liquor department, you know, for beer and liquor, they literally go against all the other third party, you know, buy rights and all these other places, and they'll say, okay, here's a bottle of Tito's vodka, you know, this size, here's our price, here's their prices, and here's a case of this beer, here's our price, their price. Again, I know it takes a little bit of time, and maybe you can and can. Again, these are things you have to check with your manufacturers in terms of what your uh, compliance restrictions are. But just think about it. If I was able to hand somebody and say, hey, well, hey, look, you're thinking about, oh, you're more expensive. Well, here's their prices. Here's our prices. Make a difference. Within a certain range, people will always pay more if they think they're getting a better experience. Like with the Starbucks, again, it's a cup of coffee, but we've been sold that going there is a great or all these other places and we're going to get a better experience around our cup of coffee. So people will pay more if they feel like they're getting something better, if they're getting taken care of. So again, within a certain range, so how do we advertise that? as I said. So again, thinking about this with your website and your marketing and how you're pushing things out. These, once we release this survey, our goal is that this is going to help you understand what customers are feeling so you can target your marketing. So let's get into reviews. As I said, reviews are so important. Dealers are, are finally waking up, but just think about it. It's common sense. All of you, every single person here, uses reviews to make decisions on restaurants, on trips, on purchases. We go evaluate monitors at Best Buy or on Amazon, who's got the stars, who's got this, but yet we still think from a dealership perspective they're not important. People don't read it. It's the chicken and the egg. Five years ago when I first started talking about reviews, yes, I would believe that because there weren't reviews for people to read. Now there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reviews on different platforms, on Facebook, all different places about people can go read what your customers are saying about you. So you need to get in front of it and get people to post reviews, especially about service. Now, the reason that 3% said, well, people didn't read, they read reviews, there's not a lot of service reviews. If you look at most dealerships, most of the reviews are coming about their car buying experience. They're missing the service end. But yet you have probably three, four, or more times the amount of people coming in for service on any given month and bought a car. Why you're not mining that to get more reviews to stand out from your other competitors just in volume of reviews, but also to market to get reviews for your pages to be able to turn around when somebody's like, I don't know if I really should service here, you spin around or send them a link and say, read what these hundred people said about us. Hundreds of people like coming here for service. Here's here, Go just read that. That's why it's important to be able to leverage this and again, leverage it on your website. Most dealerships don't leverage reviews enough in their marketing or driving them in terms of videos and testimonials. One of the biggest things that I see all the time is dealers will say to me, and 
again, you guys can think about it yourselves. People say, oh, we can't get our sales team to do it. We can't get our service advisors. I personally think it's the approach you're taking. You're going in, maybe today, if one of you guys is a fixed ops manager, general manager, you're, this is going to stick in your head. You're going to go, ah, I'm going to get reviews. And you get everyone in the room and you say, all right, everybody, we need reviews. We need reviews. And you rah. Problem is, all of those people are sitting there going, I'm busy, man. I can't do this. And you just, everybody has to get reviews. Instead of saying to everybody, hey, guys, we have a team here. I have 10 people in front of me. Can we get, can we get one review from our service customers this week? One. Everyone will laugh and say, sure. As a team, can we get one? Oh, sure, we'll get one. Can I get one from the new car department? Yep. Can I get one from you? Yep, we can do that. That's three reviews. By the end of the year, you have 150 reviews. Now, will you only have one review? No, you'll have more, but you put the bar so low. Instead of saying to everybody, I need five reviews from everybody, and I'm going to spiff on $10 a review, $20, blah, 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 blah. Instead of just going to the team, dudes, get me one review. If you're, you're kidding me. We have 300 people come in to pay us money in service every single month, and you're telling me we can't get 1% of them, 1%. So basically three reviews. We can't, we can't do that. Now one person, one out of 100 people who pay us money won't do a review. Like everyone will laugh. It's the most absurd thing. They'll say, oh, man, we can get 10. We can get 10 this month. Great. Now I've got 120 reviews at the end of the month instead of 50. See what I'm saying? That's the mentality of keeping the bar low and how you get reviews. It's that simple if you make it simple. If you make it hard, then you talk to me about, well, we used to get reviews, and we used to get reviews, and we used to do this, and, and then there's a gap. There's a great survey out there. It's the customer, here's a little bit of, um, Bright Local, B-R-I-G-H-T Local, all one word, brightlocal.com, 2015 customer service survey. They go out and they ask people in every industry about the importance of reviews. Automotive is the, one of the only ones each year it's gaining more importance to people about reading reviews to decide who to go business with. Some other industries now are tapering off because people are like, well, it's reviews. The big key about reviews are two things you got to take away with. One is three to four stars is the, is the wheelhouse, okay? Three to four stars. Five stars freaks people out. Below two stars, below three, they're not talking to you. So three to four stars. So we want to shoot for that four, 4.1, 4.2. But recency, they got to have reviews within the last two to three months. Anything longer than three months, if you go nothing, nothing, three months, they're thinking, what the hell is going on now recently? Okay? So if you have great reviews before and then you go dead and there are no reviews or these big, big empty gaps, it's concerning to them. That's why I say it's better off if I'm just posting one review a week and they just see last week, last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, what they think is people are getting a good experience all the time. That's important to people in their decision-making process about reviews. So that's reviews. Pretty simple. Don't want to beat it. We talk about it a lot, but it's important. Please make sure you're doing it. Let's talk about tools. There's a lot of tools. Now, we at PCG host... Uh, and present the AWA Awards where we review a lot of different technology. Dealer On has been a winner of some of our uh, awards for their technology. Uh, but we review all different ones. So when I'm showing you examples of, in this case, Dealer Track, it's not because I'm saying Dealer Track is great. I'm just using different images and, you know, over the next couple slides, different products. I'm not saying one's better than the other. If you're using one, great. If you're not using something like this, go investigate. Go take a look. If you need any advice, Places to go, come get, you know, download the AWA book or just reach out to me, I'll help you. But there's so many tools now out there to make it easy to check people in. Remember, when I bring my car in, I don't want to spend hours there. Now, either I'm dropping it off or I'm going to sit there, but I don't want to take forever. So if I can walk around with this tool on the left on the iPad and check things in, and on the phone, I can do it on my phone as well all of these checks, is this good, this is good, that speeds the process of getting my car in, me being able to go to the person and say, here's what we see, here's what's going on, take a look at this, here's how it is on a mobile phone versus come back to my desk, let me spin my desktop around. Remember, if I can do it in the lane really quickly, that just helps me move it along and be able to make decisions 
customer make decisions on what service I want. Um, again, the dashboards. This is dealer sock kits now. This is their dashboard. Again, their CRM tool. Seeing so from a platform, being able to manage your fixed stops. Again, the more tools you have so that the service advisors can move things through, look at the history of the customer, see what's out there from a management perspective. Again, noticing in the lower left-hand corner here, having marketing opportunities. The first one says sold no service. So all of those people in my CRM that I sold to that haven't serviced with us for six to 12 months, marketing opportunity. Let's go to Facebook. Let's go pull those uh, email addresses, upload them into Facebook, let's send them a targeted ad to say, hey, haven't seen you for a while, why don't you come? Notice all of these, 7 to 12, no service. Customers declined in the past three months. They declined services. You offered it to them, they declined it. What are we doing to market to get those people back in? Or are we just, we want to market to get new customers? Well, again, if you have the right tools, again, it's like equity mining, for cars, when we turn around here on this next one, when we're talking about equity mining, when we notice in service that someone's lease is coming up, are we communicating with sales to say, hey, why don't you talk to them about a new car? Or if a service is going to be so drastically expensive and they're at the end, maybe instead of having them do the service, we can roll them into a car, talk to them about it. Again, all of these tools are there. The question is, are you utilizing them efficiently to connect all the departments, connect sales. As I said earlier, once a sale is handed over to service, service's job is to keep them, to keep them there until they're ready to buy another car. And then the goal is that they buy it from us. Well, if I'm sending targeted messages to them, targeted offers to them, if I'm staying ahead of them, calling them up to schedule their service before they think about service, am I creating a great experience in the drive, getting them in and out? Am I providing loaner cars? Am I calling them when the service is taking too long? Am I calling them and say, hey, you know what? You could do this service now or you could do it later versus, hey, I'm doing it now because I'm a short term. I need to get my ROs up. So I'm just shoving a service down their throat. Again, all of these tools there are going to help you provide a great service experience so nobody thinks of going somewhere else. Again, remember, why would I come back to the dealership? You're using custom parts for my car. If I'm going to an independent, they're using generic parts that are going to sort of fit mine, plus they're going to fit some other ones. So again, and are they factory trained on all the updates? Do they understand everything? Or is it, hey, I just like to fix cars. How are you marketing your service? All of these tools are going to help you. One of the other tools, one of the other tools, this is, this is a company called Digital Dealerships, uh, uh, D Digital Dealership Systems. Okay, again. I, I'm not, I don't get anything from them. I just like pushing out tools to you guys that are cool. What they do, and this is an area that I don't think a lot of dealers pay attention to, is their service appointment board. Do you have a service appointment board in your service area updating people? How long their time is it going to be? Where it is? Or using, if they're watching ESPN or some morning show, talk show, or the news, you know, these can customize underneath on the side and on the bottom and run targeted ads about service. So if you're running a tire special or you're running this thing or you're running that thing, you can you have a captive audience sitting there. Are you using your digital displays to market to people? Maybe in between the commercials, you're running testimonial videos of your of your company or running your own commercials versus cutting to a competitor's commercial. So if I'm sitting in a Ford store and I'm watching you know, the morning show, the morning chat show there, and all of a sudden, the TV station decides to play the Chevy store's ad and commercial down the block. Why the hell would I let that in my dealership? Talk to these guys. It's a really cool tool. And like I said, I don't think a lot of people are looking at that. They're focused all about other things. But again, you have a cat. Everybody has a TV screen in their waiting room. You could use it for this. You could be running pictures of your staff, bios, pictures of things that you're doing in the dealership, what cool charities you're supporting. Again, it's a captive way to why, why is this a great place to be? See, got to think of all these different cool ways to do it. So digital dealership systems, Todd Catcher is his name. So again, if anybody's looking for him, just let me know. I'll give you his info. You can find him on LinkedIn, find him on Facebook. He's all over the place. 
real good guy, real great product. So again, in tool terms of tools here, any tools that you're using in your dealership, ease of use for check-in, the service appointment board, again, something else that a lot of people don't think of, uh, your service CRM, do you have a service BDC, someone who is calling out to set up appointments, calling out for people who declined services, calling out to people who didn't service, that retention number that we were talking about. Service marketing, what are you doing? Some of these platforms, all of them, dealer track, Elead One is another one. Uh, that was that last company that had the, the green images of the uh, equity money. All of them have marketing platforms, marketing suites to help you send out different information, just not, hey, here's a coupon, come in, but creative, targeted advertising to market your service department and all the things that you're doing. Again, why should they come there? And as I said, equity mining. Is there a connection between your service department and your sales department so that we're holding on to people longer and then being able to hand them over to sales to say, hey, look, I think this would be a great person for you to talk to about a new vehicle. So. As we're winding down here, a lot of information. Again, I wanted to give you tangible things that you can do. So again, in summary, you know, those advertising checklists, make sure you're checking them. Go take a look at your website. Go have someone outside the industry go look at your website and see what they find. Go take a walk through your service department. Look at the tools that you're using. Look around your dealership. Are you advertising anything in your dealership about service in store? That's why, again, the book, The Power of Connected Marketing, your offline stuff, what you're doing on radio, TV, your mailers, does it connect to what the message is on your website? Are they, are they sending them to the right location? And then when they come into the store, they come into the dealership, are you advertising? If you won something, an award, is it visible? If you have reviews, are they visible? Are you using tools like the digital, uh, the, the TV screen to advertise to them to, again, the ultimate goal is retaining our customers, keeping them in service, so our sales team can then sell them a new vehicle, or these people will tell their friends of what a great experience, and maybe I can get service for my brand from my competitor. They bought from them, but they service with me, and then the next time they want to buy, they're in my pool, not their pool. So a couple resources for you to look at, check, one thing we're going to talk about in a moment, but PCG, in the spring we did a GM mentoring program. It is a six, seven month program. Every month we help dealer, general managers understand marketing and understand some of the things we just went through in terms of websites and reports and marketing and Facebook and what they should be doing to get them smarter so that when they understand where they're spending their money, having better conversations with their vendors to make their marketing more efficient in this digital age. So how to sell cars in the digital age. We are doing that again in the fall. So the GM mentoring program is happening. What we've also done, because people asked us, would we do something like that for our fixed operations managers? Ooh. Our fixed operation managers, they're even less educated in terms of digital marketing what they should do, Facebook. Again, they're just trying to service the cars, but if they're responsible to market, a lot of times the knee-jerk reaction is send out a mailer, send out a coupon, and while our hands are done, but there's so many more efficient ways to market. So again, we're gonna do this starting in August for six months, maybe seven months. Every month we have a call with everybody. They have access to our online learning center for these courses so they can get educated. And the key is, is that as a group they're talking, so they talk to other fixed operations managers, get ideas from each other. Plus we're going to be customizing and working with our team here to look at what they're doing with their dealership. So all of this again is not just generalized, it is targeted so we look at their work, what are you doing, what are the results, and we're educating them so that they become more empowered. So what we're going to be doing is offering a discount to anyone who's on this webinar. If you have a general manager or you have a fixed out, you might not be that person, but someone in your store or in your group, if you're a single store and you're in a group, any general manager, any fixed operations manager who wants to join this, I'll talk about the pricing in a minute. We're giving them a big discount. So let's go through the other resources. CBT, if you're not watching that web show every day or once a week, great. 
My brother Brian does a show there, Auto Marketing Now, but Jeff Cowan, he's the service guy there, and he has great tips, great hands-on stuff. You know, take a look at his stuff. He does a great job there. Uh, if you're going to conferences, I know Digital Dealer, Eliana spoke about that. Uh, NADA, um, you know, DMSC, our conference, you know, Jim Ziegler's doing his internet battle plan. There's a few other ones that are happening around. Um, uh, Jared Hamilton's Driving Sales Executive Summit coming up in a couple months. The, most of the time, the people who attend are the retail people. You don't take your fixed operations managers, and shame on you. You need to take your fixed operations managers or people from that department so they can go learn because there's more and more sessions now focused on fixed operations. And bringing a general manager is great, but you need somebody from the fixed operations department that is knee deep in it, who has to deal with it. They need to come. So you have to start changing the mentality of, well, we can't take the fixed operations per person. You have to. They need to start coming to these conferences. Um, as I said, the products that I talked about a little bit, dealer socket, Ely one, dealer track, dealer on. Again, I'm not saying one's better than the other. Oh, Eliana can say that about dealer on. I'm just saying is there's a lot of tools out there if you're not using them take a look at them. If you are using them, make sure that you are using them fully. Ask for more training. As I said, dealer digital dealership systems, Todd Ketcher, he's the TV screen guy. And then Media 272, he, John Nybor, that's his company. He's the one who shot all those videos, those high quality videos. Again, he has a package where they come in, they bring the director, they bring the videographers into your dealership and they work with you on the scripts ahead of time and then they come and they shoot, they edit everything, give them back to you. Um, again, so if it's always a battle saying, yeah, I'd love to do it, but I don't know how, this is somebody to talk to. Again, it's an option. Just again, providing you with resources to help solve those problems. Um, so action items to do. Review your advertising. Is that have someone shop your site? Look at the independents to get website ideas. Get reviews from your service customers. Social media's ads are cheap and effective. I applaud you all for being on this webinar and getting yourself educated. Next time, make somebody else. Make sure somebody else is with you, because again, I'm sure you're sitting here. I'm hoping some of you are sitting there going, "Oh, I wish so and so was here to hear this." And it's one thing to get the recording. That's great but it's also being able to, in the moment, to think about questions and then have an answer. But if someone does listen to it, you give this recording to somebody, somebody does have a question, again, need help, call me, reach out to me, send me an email. Again, you don't have to be a customer for me, for my team, to review what we're doing. That's why we partner with Dealer On. That's the way we run our business. We're here to help educate. Um, so lastly, here's the big, big thing. If you are interested in a fixed op, operations or the general manager mentoring program or you have somebody in your group. Uh, it's usually sixteen ninety five for the program for the whole sixteen you know one time fee for the six to eight months depending how long we go with this, depending how long again we keep it going if the people are you know still continue to need help. We're gonna give you three hundred dollars off. What? Yes. Wow, you me. that's nice. You gotta email me. Email me, and you have to mention Eliana's name. What? Me? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I'll have a list of everyone who's here. But as I said, if you know anybody who's interested, somebody from your group, recommend them. You get them to me. I'll give them $300 off. Again, this the, the, the response from the GM mentoring, some of the people came back to us and said, I found hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings that I was misspending. I am now I'm holding my vendors accountable. I feel more empowered. I feel smarter. I'm making better decisions. That's the type of thing that we're trying to do in the industry to help people educate because you guys are spending way too much money. Like I said, I've talked to average dealers. I don't know what you spend, but you can think about it yourself. But if you put all of your advertising dollars, I know in New Jersey here, there are dealers that are spending fifty to sixty thousand dollars a month in their advertising, traditional digital spends and everything else like that. When you think about that, a half a million dollars, and sometimes you don't know what's working and what's not. Time to get yourself educated, get more empowered. We're there. So that's what I got, and now Eliana to you for questions. Thank you, everyone. We'll, we'll say thank yous again, but again, I'm so 
blessed that Eliana asked me to do this. This is what I love to do, help educate everybody. So I'm hoping you got some stuff out of this that you can go back and actually look at some of these things and question. As I said, I'm here to help serve you. Please use me if you need me to help you. Uh, you know, Even if you need me on a call with one of your vendors because you don't understand how to ask the right question, I myself or one of my team will jump on a call with you and help you. Wow, that is, you're so, so generous. Thank you so much, Glenn. Amazing presentation, as I knew it would be. Now, audience, I know you have some questions. We're going to get to those in just a minute. Before we get to your questions, though, I do want to bring your attention to the handout section of the GoToWebinar interface. In there, you will see one handout, one very important, awesome handout. It is actually the PDF of Glenn's slide deck that we just went through. So if you want to do that and, and you need a copy of it, it's right there for you. It's available for immediate download and it will be there until the end of the webinar. All right. So take a moment to download that. I know it had a lot of amazing notes in there. Okay. Now we are going to get to the part. I wish I had some game show music. I love having game show music, but I don't have any. So we're going to go to the next slide where we are going to start giving away some prizes. And we do have some great prizes for you today. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends over at PCG Consulting, they're giving away some awesome prizes today. Three of you lucky attendees are going to win a copy of Glenn's new book, The Power of Connected Marketing. And then after that, we're going to do one more prize, a bonus prize. One lucky attendee is going to win free access for 90 days to PCG's valuable online courses, Marketing Fixed Ops Using Social Media and Marketing Fixed Ops Using Google. So I need everyone to get ready, get to your keyboards. First person to write in the correct response to one of our giveaway questions will be winning one of these awesome prizes today. If you're a vendor, I don't know that any of these prizes would really do much for you. So please, if you wouldn't mind, just step aside and let the dealerships fight over this. This is of course, these prizes are intended for dealership personnel only, but we do appreciate you being here, all you vendors. We love having you, and you, of course, you're always welcome on all of our Dealer On webinars. All right, here we go. Good luck, everyone. I want to remind you we're trying to get through this really fast. We can get through the questions. So as soon as you are named a winner, please write in your dealership and your mailing address. How else am I going to get those prizes out to you, right? So remember to send me your mailing address as soon as possible. All right, here we go. Good luck, everyone. The first question, and this is for one of the three books, The Power of Connected Marketing. In 2015, what was the amount of money generated by dealerships in aftermarket sales? Oh, my gosh. First person to write in got it correct, Heather Paquette. Look at you. I said it before. You are fast, little lady. Heather Paquette is our winner. Heather I know I should know by now what dealership you're with or what your mailing address is, but I don't. So write on in and let me know. The correct answer was, of course, $97 billion. That's with a B. Heather, I'm writing your name down. Congrats. Pocketer. And she is with Whiteman Chevrolet. Heather, you're already a winner today, my friend, so you can sit the rest of this out. <laughs> she says, thank you. All right. Whiteman Chevrolet is in Glen Falls, New York. Congratulations, Heather. All right. Next question. Here we go, everyone. Good luck. According to Glenn, what is one of the best advertising platforms for the money right now? Ooh, again, the first person to write on in got it right. Facebook is correct. And that winner is Jeff Bud Budger. Booger. Bugger. I don't really know how to say your last name, Jeff, but I do know that you are a winner, Jeff. Congratulations. Yes, Facebook was the correct answer. And Jeff is about to tell me where he's from. Any second now. Ah, Fremont Volkswagen in Casper, Wyoming. Thank you so much, Jeff. Congratulations. All right, you, you and Heather can just sit these out. We've got two more questions for two more prizes. The third book is going to go to the winner the first person who writes in the correct response to this question. Good luck, everyone. What is one of the best things you should have on your website to help you advertise your fixed operations? Lexi Dean, you are correct. The answer was videos. I'm sure there's lots of things that we could have on, on our websites to help market our fixed ops, but 
Specifically, we were looking for the answer videos. Lexi Dean, congratulations. All right. Lexi is about to write on in and let me know. I already wrote your name down. Don't worry. Now, all three of you, Heather Paquette, Jeff Bugger, and Lexi Dean, you have all won a copy of Glenn Pash's new book, The Power of Connected Marketing. Congratulations. I'm sure it's a phen phenomenal read. He has some really cool co-writers with him, too, and it's amazing, and you're going to be getting that very shortly. Oh, by the way, Lexi Dean is with Monroeville Dodge in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. I think we talked about this, didn't we? All right, last prize. Good luck, everyone. The last prize is to win free access for 90 days to two of PCG's valuable online courses, Marketing Fixed Ops Using Social Media and Marketing Fixed Ops Using Google. Good luck. This is a, a, another wonderful prize from our friends over at PCG. I hope you guys are paying attention. What did we say was the PCG booth number at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in August? Nope. 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 You guys don't pay attention to me when I introduce the show? What? <laughs> nope. No one got it. You guys can keep guessing. Oh, so close. So close. Oh, here we go. <laughs> No, Jeff, you can't win a second time. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, oh, somebody did get it right. Yay, us. Daniel Pizarro. Daniel Pizarro, you are today's winner. Yes, the PCG booth number is 235. Just to make sure, I said it three times when I introduced the show. You people, you. Daniel, you're our winner today, my friend. I don't recall seeing your name come across my screen before, so congratulations. The booth number is 235. You're a winner. I don't know what dealership you're with, but you're about to tell me, aren't you? Ooh, Daniel. He is with Go Auto in Edmonton, Canada. Congrats, Daniel. That's great. Okay, congratulations to Heather Paquette, Jeff Booger, Lexi Dean, and Daniel Pizarro. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. I know we didn't have prizes for everyone today, but you know what? Come on back to another Dealer On webinar, and who knows, that could be the day you win a really cool prize on a Dealer On webinar. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. Huge congratulations to our four winners today. And, of course, we got to thank our good friends over at PCG for their incredible generosity. All right, Glenn, are you ready? Let's turn yes. on our webcams. we got some great questions that came in from the audience. All right, see me? Hello. Looking handsome, looking handsome. All right, here we go. Thank you so much. All right presentation was fabulous. Okay, first question came in kind of early, and this one came in from Megan, and Megan says, do you believe that being too aggressive to book that first oil change appointment would steer customers away? Okay, Glenn, here we go. A customer just bought a car from the dealership. Right. How do you get them to come in for that first service appointment? What's the, what's the catch? How do you do it? What would you do? Well, what I, what I would do, and, and, and some dealers do this uh, naturally, we've coached some dealers on it. If I was a salesperson and I'm, again, this is where it goes back to where the sales team and service have to work together. We have to be working together to retain this customer service for the dealership, or as I call it, the mothership. So what <laughs> I would do is I would, as the car is getting brought around or after it's coming in or whatever, I would say, well, fantastic. In a few months, you're going to be coming in for your first service. Let's walk over. Let me show you. I would walk them over to the service department. I would introduce them to the service manager. I would show them the waiting room. I'd show them the service department. I'd talk about how great it is and whatever. And I would get them to book their for their appointment. Why don't we do this? Do the close. Why don't I do this, Eliana? Uh, your your first service appointment is going to be in six months. Why don't we just schedule it for six months from today? I'll send you a calendar invite. Of course, our team will follow up with you probably a few days before that just to lock down a, a specific time for you. But I'm going to put it down for six months from today. So that's, let's see, July, August, September, I don't know. Uh, we're going to do it in December. And, uh, that, but more importantly, what I'm doing is I'm selling the dealership's service department. It's expected. But if I let them leave, if the salesperson just goes, I'm done, it's over, let them go, then what has to happen is someone has to go hound them and be that aggressive person on the phone where it's like, hey, let me call, let me call, let me call. Now, 
if that ha so that's how I would do it. If for some reason your your department doesn't do that, they walk out the door. I would probably uh, two weeks before they're supposed to come in, I would hit them up with a informational thing. If I'm going to send them an email, I would send them an email with, "Hey, your service is coming up, and here's why this little video tells you about the reasons why you should." It's important for you to change your oil within this time frame, and I have a video about what's different between the first oil change and for future oil changes or whatever. Something helpful for them, and then I would tell them in the video or in the email saying, "There's two ways that you can do this. You know, you can, or three ways. You can call us. We'll schedule an appointment. You can click here, give them a link online. If I don't hear from you in the next couple of days, one of our representatives will reach out to you, or if you prefer us to text you." Just click here. They opt into your text. I don't. I think texting is big that people don't pay attention to because a lot of people <laughs> like texting. Like right now, if phone calls, it was funny. They did a statistic that said 50% of people hate getting phone calls now. Like we have a phone, but they don't look at it as a phone anymore. This is my computer. Text me. So that's another way. So that's the way that I would do it. I wouldn't hammer them. Hey, come in, come in, come in, come in. But if I hit them up with information ahead of time as to why it's important, they already bought from me. If I sold them on the service, why it's great, why we do a great job here, then it's more about, oh, yeah, I got to do this. Let me go do this. And then explain your process. If I don't hear from you, I'm going to call you. Then it's expected. Make sense? I, I think it makes great sense. Megan, if you have a follow-up question, ah, she already wrote in, thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next question comes to you from one of our winners today, Lexi. She wrote in, <laughs> it's not really a question, but I love it. I love what she wrote. She says, my service managers and GMs are completely uncooperative when it comes to fixed ops marketing and ads. I cannot wait to share this information with them. Good job, right. Lexi. And the book. Now, Lexi, Lexi, I will, I, Lexi, I will offer again. I will offer to you, if you show them this, or if they don't watch the video, or if you just hand them out things like that, and if you can get them to say, "Listen, could you just please take five minutes and get on a phone call with Glenn, the guy who did this, so he can explain to you." why it's important and how we can do it and it's not going to cost us an arm and leg or just refine what we're already doing. You know, again, they could be spending five grand, six grand, seven grand already on these mailers and other things. You say, listen, we're not saying spend more, but could we try something different with this? Just email me. I'll jump on the phone with them. I've done this before where all of a sudden you could be saying the exact same thing and I know it's going to be frustrating for you. I maybe get on the phone with them and maybe say the exact same thing you do and they're going to say, that's unbelievable. I think we're going to do this because Glenn's smart and you're going to go walk into the wall and bang your head and say, I've been saying this for a year. It doesn't matter. If we can shift their brain by using the video, by getting me on the phone with them, just so that they look at what you're saying in a different light, please let me help you. I got you. And Lexi, she already wrote back in. She's like, I'm all over that. I would love to do that. Her exact words, I would love to do that. Lexi, yeah. let's make some magic happen, okay, babe? Okay, here we go. Next question. Uh, um, Heather, I might have to get a little bit of clarification on this. This had to do with a slide that you were on kind of early in your presentation, Glenn. Mm -hmm. um, it was about the Facebook ad. And she I said, where was the 5% off landing customers when they clicked? Were they on sales or were they on service pages? They were on a service landing page that mimicked that ad that explained it. So 5%, you know, 5%. And um, if I remember, we've run multiple ones of these. Some were just mentioned this code you know, had a code right. on there to say you mentioned this code and you go there or just mention that you saw this ad, right? And the dealership, and this is the key, is that the dealership staff, because that dealership, we made sure it was connected from what the marketing department did to what the advisors were doing. We told them this may happen, keep your ears open. And so when people started walking in going, hey, I saw this ad 5% off if I take a test drive, Versus if you don't tell them, if someone comes in and says to the advisor, well, I, hey, there was 5% off, well, that's not us. I haven't heard anything like that. There's a disconnect. So again, we sent them to a landing page, gave them a code. So again, it's all it's code or if they forget the code, just mention you saw the ad. That was enough. 
for it to work where all of a sudden they started picking up five, six, seven more over the couple weeks we did. I think they picked up like anywhere from seven to ten more test drives out of nowhere for five percent. They were all loving it. They were like, this is great. I'm getting more people in the car because, again, backtracking, if you think that the test drive sells cars, how about getting more people into a test drive? And for that little amount of money, it made a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. And Heather wrote in, okay, makes sense to have a specialized landing page for that, but not tied into sales or VDPs? No, because again, it's, you're not saying go, you have to, tech, and let me take a step back. If you say, if you're trying to target, you could take it a step further. I'm just brainstorming here. So let's say that you have a specific vehicle that you are running a promotion on or you're trying to move. And you say, listen, get 5% off if you take a test drive of this specific car. Then that landing page needs to have that vehicle on it, mean pictures or everything, and then click through to the VDP for more information on more specific. Take a look and you, you drive them down to your VDP. Sure, you could do that. That's a, take, that's a great idea to take it a step further. If you just want to get people into any vehicle, take a test drive of any car, again, this is where you're marking. The, this dealership was like, I don't care because... What will happen is most people are going to tell me the vehicle. It's going to be probably similar to what they're doing. He says this car, they weren't like, hey, everybody's taking the test drive of the fancy super vehicle that nobody wants to buy. You know, like, oh, they all wanted to drive the Corvette. It was more along the lines of, like, they're, what they're hoping for, you may get one or two of them, but they're hoping for most people are thinking their next car. Well, while I'm here, I might as well just take a test drive of the same car, newest features, new upgrades. Oh, I have a 2012. Oh, can I have a 2017 Accord? Because I'm in an Accord. I might want to get the new Accord. Or could I try that one? This is where your creativity comes of marketing and, more importantly, testing. There is no right way. It's A or B. Let's try this. Let's try advertising in general. What did it garner us? So you run that for a month and you see what did the test drives do, how many, what did it cost you in terms of 5%, and did you sell any cars off of it? Hey, if it cost me 200 bucks in 5%, but I sold a car and I made a couple grand off of it, well, then that's a home run. If I say trying it out going, I want to send them to a specific vehicle that we're running. Did it work? Did I get test drives? Now, you know, driving them to a specific car, I got less test drives. But even less test drives, but you know what? I sold more because they were really intent on looking at that car. This is where your creativity of testing things short period of time, very specific. Like I said, so if you're going to test these type of things, don't change too many things. So if I sit there and I say I'm going to chart any car versus this car, or you have to take a test, do the same thing. Take a test drive of the new version of the car you're, you're, you're driving right now. So if you want to keep it that narrow, that's where you play around and say, what garnered the best results for us was if I got them to get in a new version of what they currently did, I was able to get them out of it because they're comfortable with that car. That actually sold me more. Well, then that's what we do. So again, this is where you're playing around. The key is, and I, I want to harken back to what you just said, is making sure we're dropping them, whatever ad we're running, when we land on that page, that landing page mirrors the exact offer that we did. It's not driving them to the vehicle detail pages, and they're like, what the hell? how did I get here? Then it's all bait and switch. Hey, you take a test drive of the Jeep Wrangler, and you drive them to the Jeep Wrangler. They're like, wait a minute, versus drive them to a landing page on your website explaining that, maybe having a video about it. Hi, here's what we're doing here, because we want to show off our great, uh, the great Jeep Wrangler. Fantastic thing. Anybody who takes a test drive, you see this ad, you come in, you bring your car in for service, you take a test drive while your car's in service, and we'll take 5% off, uh, but you got to drive the Jeep Wrangler. Then you have them there, and they say for more details, or if you want to see specific things, then you drive them to a VDP. Then you also see how many people click through. All of these analytics can help tailor your marketing to make it right. most efficient. Okay. Glenn, thank you so much. Heather did write back. She says, gotcha, makes sense. Thank you. And we do a lot of service to sales, test drives, and appraisal offers, so having another avenue is great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. Now, Glenn, we are way over on time. So for these last five questions, I'm going to ask you to keep your, your answers as succinct and brief as possible. Is that possible? Yes, okay, yes, thank you, sir. I, I okay. don't know. I will do my best. Okay. Uh, another winner wrote in with a question for you. Jeff wrote in. He says, 
What about Facebook's new algorithm? How does that change marketing and advertising? Well, it depends what algorithm you're doing. Again, it's the key to the ads are is you want to be targeted. You know, go in there and set your profile, set your 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 uh, your, your specific things. Just blasting out in general, just doing a Facebook ad. Again, you can do them, but you got to set them for regions. You got to set them for profiles and right. things like that. The algorithms haven't affected our ads at all because ours are so targeted to a specific audience. Now, Keith wrote in another question since we're talking about Facebook ads. So I'll. I'll yeah jump and give you Keith's. He says, for Facebook ads, how do you get around the 20% text only limitations? Again, what we found with them is, again, you, you have to be compliant with that. So again, it's coming up with 20% text of a good hook, an ad, okay, good writing, you know, or we've done is some of the ads have had videos in them. And again, if you're not talking in the videos, we've done cue card ads and things like that. That gets around some of that. Right. But again, it really comes down to marketing. Get a good image, good hook, good incentive offer. It's going to discipline your marketing efforts to keep it succinct for the 20% to be able to get them to click through. Love it. Thank you so much for the great question, Keith. Okay, next question comes to you from Sarah. She says, Glenn, with Facebook ads and social media in general, do you have data on what converts better, video or still image? I've heard mixed things. Um, again, I go back to the content. I've had videos that stink and they don't convert. I've had videos that are great, they convert. I've had ads that stink, they don't convert. Everything goes down <laughs> to it, it really is. I don't want to be yeah, I don't want to be vague about it, but this is where your testing comes in also for your market. Again, sometimes a vehicle with a great picture and a hook is great. Sometimes, again, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes videos can be, as I said, a six-second Vine video could be great. It could be horrible. A two-minute video could be great or horrible. It, it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So you've got to reverse engineer. You've got to say, what am I trying to accomplish? Is, a, uh, is an ad better for this uh, goal or a video? And then test them. And again, test short, test long. The key is keep change one thing if you're doing a video and you're saying it's a minute video then uh, say you know advertising a wrangler say can i let me test and see if i can do this in 30 seconds don't change anything don't change the vehicle don't change the offer don't change anything just change the time and see what works if you're going to say i'm going to change it from a jeep to this a minute keep all the parameters on any of your tests a b testing only change one thing because then you're not going to know what works or not if all of a sudden you're changing the offer and the color and right. i went from an ad to a video that's not apples to apples ad offers the same i put a truck versus a car or i put a blue truck versus a white truck what worked black truck i moved the truck in the top truck in the bottom offer here offer there okay. that's Testing. All right, cool. Sarah, thank you so much. Great question. Look at last two questions and then we're going to close out the show. That means, audience, you just have a few more moments to download Glenn Pash's slide deck from the handout section of your GoToWebinar interface. All right, so let's make that happen. All right, this question comes in from Kevin. <laughs> I told him I wasn't going to ask him. He's like, no, no, no. I still want to know the answer. Okay. okay. He says, our manufacturer forces us to use another website vendor other than dealer on all right <laughs> can you work with any website vendor to enhance if you're talking about us as PCG yes we work with every platform uh, to enhance uh, in terms of enhancing if you're asking me can my marketing company work on any website platform you should be able to again it's it all comes down to compliance with your manufacturer what you can and cannot do on your right. website uh, but in terms of you're asking me if PCG if my company can work on any website platform, yes, we work on every website platform um, that's out there. Okay. Now, if you're asking me, <laughs> I'm going to have somebody call you later to get today, Kevin, and let's see if we can work something out for you, okay? <laughs> All right. Last question comes in from Megan, and she says, we have a text communication system that we ask how their service was via text after they've left. We have so many great reviews. But how can we use them, and are there legal issues? Can we just ask the customer if we can use their review on our website? For example, first name and the town. And then she went on to say, people don't want to be bothered 
to go back onto Facebook or onto Google after they've already told us how we did via text? That's right. an excellent question. So you have all these great text testimonials, let's say. What can we do with those? Okay, so we'll keep this condensed. It, it, it goes a grant, uh, uh, first thing, text. You have to check with your town meaning your state, I should say, uh, and ask your lawyer. Every, every dealership has a lawyer. Ask them for your state's uh, compliance in terms of that because there are opt-ins, opt-outs. Do you have to get permission to use somebody's words? If they say you can use their words, then yes, you can actually cut and paste it out and just create a page of, hey, here's texts we got, just like you would, hey, here's tweets we got, and you can cut, paste, put their first name in the town. Now, in terms of saying, what now, God bless you. I think it's great that you're out there using the text. Um, the key is, how do you use it for other ones? No, you don't want to worry about those people asking them again because, yes, it's a hassle to go. But if I'm asking everybody in the dealership as they're leaving, if I ask every service person, hey, did I do a great job? And we have word tracks for this, but if I did, hey, did I meet your expectations? Oh, you did a great job. Hey, would you mind leaving me a review? Sure. Then it's, I can send you a link. And then you can have a, maybe a page on your website with buttons that go to Dealer Raider or uh, RepairPal or Cars.com or your Google or wherever you want to send people. You, know, you can drive them there. So when you're thank you for servicing yeah, with us, see. there's an email link there that gives them options. The key is if you ask everybody a variety of different places, right. you'll fill them all up. Like remember when I said if I ask for one in service and I have 50 of them, well, let me get 10 of them onto Google, let me get 10 on cars.com, let me get 10 on Facebook. It's just let me ask them for reviews, drive them to a page, a landing page on your site saying, Hear what, see what our customers are saying about us, hey, love to leave us a review, and then just have options, Facebook, and it links to your Facebook page, Google links to their page, cars.com. This way it allows them to do it, and then if you get a lot of reviews on Google and you're like, oh, we've got to slow down, take the Google icon off of that page, and then just leave the other ones until you fill up. Again, a lot of different strategies, but... The fact that you're getting them from service, notice that it's simple, and that's why you're doing it. But if you get everybody talking about it as they're leaving and asking, and you have a couple hundred people paying you money, you're going to get 10% of them, and then you just sort of direct them around to what's convenient for them based on your marketing. Hey, we need some Facebook reviews. Tweak them over there. Make sense? Megan, that was a capital idea that he just shared with you. Okay, yes, she says thank you. All right, so it's not enough just to text out, hey, did you have a good experience? Text them the link to where you want them to leave the review. Awesome. Now, one thing, just one thing with texting again. I just want to stop. make sure that you are compliant in your state right. with following opt-in. Some are double opt-ins, opt-outs, all the other things to just even get them texting. Because just because you ask somebody, cannot you know? Would you like me to text? They have to opt in, and there is something in usually in the text box, the first one saying, if you would like to text here, click one to opt in, something like that. Some of them have double opt-ins, but just make sure you're compliant because texting falls under the same rules of phone under do not calls, and anytime you're texting people and they turn around and say, I told you not to, I opted out, it's very important if people are opting out of texts that you keep them out of your email blast or text blast because there have been companies and dealerships that have had to pay millions of dollars in fines because every single episode of that where you do something wrong is like could be up to eleven thousand dollars for one episode Whoa. so you could be in a lot of money if you're not texting correctly I know text is a big thing now but if you're not really tight and understanding how to do it and compliant with opt-in opt-out especially people who opt out it's the ones who opt out you hit them again you know that's like an email blast if all of a sudden you hit people an email who opted out they get pissed Nowadays, they will sue you or complain about you, and then you could have a class action suit, and it's millions of dollars, and you do not want to be responsible to your dealer to say, hey, uh, I was the one who hit that email text blast, sorry, and they're paying millions of dollars. Okay, you heard it. Megan, excellent question. Thank you so much. And Glenn, always a pleasure to have you on my show, sir. You uh, gave us so much information today. My head is still spinning. Audience, I know you loved it, too. So... I'm going to let you know this is being recorded. I will be sharing the link with all of you within the next couple of hours. So please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online. So all you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars. There you can view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. 
and yeah, you're going to get a short survey, really short, six questions. Actually, it's a new survey. So we want to know what you thought about today's presentation. So please fill out that survey and let us know. And yes, Glenn Pash will also be at Digital Dealer speaking about the power of connected marketing. And his brother Brian will be there speaking on an automotive panel about how to measure if your digital advertising is working to sell more cars. You don't want to miss that. So when you go to Digital Dealer, you want to also check out the PCG booth at booth 235. And hey, I'm going to be there too, because guess what? Sean Rains and Greg Gifford will both be presenting at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Vegas as well. Dealeron is going to be exhibiting there too. So if you're going to be there, you got to stop by booth 601. I'd love to say hi to you. And oh, we have an awesome booth. You don't want to miss it. So remember, booth 601, Digital Dealer, be there. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar, where an expert from Google is going to share what dealers really need to know about YouTube. You can't afford to miss this, let me tell you, because YouTube is an amazing, powerful, and popular website. And it's the second largest search engine in the world. So why are there so many dealerships that have yet to take advantage of it? If you're not using YouTube to improve conversions, traffic, customer loyalty, branding, or sales, then you are missing an enormous opportunity. Is your dealership rocking YouTube? And if not, why the heck not? If your dealership's been holding off from fully utilizing YouTube, or you're not sure where to start, then wait no longer, because we brought in the big guns to help you out. In this unparalleled one-hour webinar, Kelly McNearney, Senior Automotive Retail Strategist for Google, is going to focus on YouTube video strategies and best practices that dealers can use to drive conversions and sell more cars. This focus on YouTube video strategies and best practices is going to be amazing and you don't want to miss it. Kelly's then going to share real world dealer case studies and best practices for using YouTube as part of an un as part of any successful vehicle sales strategy. This session will also unveil a new YouTube tool called Local Extra Reach to show you how YouTube can extend local TV buys with lower CPP and incremental audience gains. So if you're ready to learn what dealers really need to know about YouTube, then this is a must-see presentation. So don't miss it. Register now. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. You got questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics? Contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio, and I'd love to hear from you. So you can find me online, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, I'm on all the automotive social networks, or you can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in DealerOn's continuing education series. Take care. Thanks, guys.